Well everyone, it's my lunch break and I've got my table full of crap here working on my 2200 watt pure sine inverter, the Powerbrite 2200 watt one. The 1500 was working as I demonstrated in my last little video. And this is the 2200 and it's really getting to be a pain. It's a rather expensive inverter so I don't just want to throw it away. I do want to try to fix it so I'm kind of forcing myself to work on it here every now and then. Uh, but uh, it looks like I may have just found the problem. Um, let me back up a little bit. I don't want to move this around too much because the cables might get broken inside, but this is one where I, where I replaced all of these transistors along the side because they were all fried. I replaced the drive circuitry in here, which you probably can't see very well, but uh, a couple of these plus a resistor that I later found out was bad. This drive IC, I did order that and I replaced that. Um, and I messed with this for quite some time, trying to figure out exactly what was wrong using different power supplies and different equipment that I'm not showing you here. So I apologize for not recording at all, but it really is a pain to record things sometimes. So I didn't, and I was just poking around here today trying to figure out if I could find what else is wrong, since I can't find anything wrong with this portion of it. That's where I thought the problem was, and now I'm not so sure. And I did just find that this rectifier bridge <clears throat> is bad. And possibly that's all I need to fix now, uh, now that I have the input stage working. It does look like there was some earlier rework in here. Like here, I didn't do that. Um, other miscellaneous things. But this here is one of the four simple diodes that formed the rectifier bridge. And let me zoom in a little bit. So up here are the four diodes that form the rectifier bridge, the high voltage uh, DC supply, uh, switches through the transformers, comes through these rectifiers and dumps into these big output caps here. And uh, I took two of the transistors out, left two of them in, and it looks like one of these two that I took out is shorted. And uh, the inverter certainly can't work without it, so I'm hoping that's the problem. Now, these I didn't actually check initially, because they pretty much never go bad. I've never seen them go bad before. They're extremely cheap, they're not under much stress at all, and there's really no reason why they should fail. In this case, it looks like they failed because they weren't heat synced properly. Um, just like that other one, some of these bars here, you can see that they're over-tightened and bent. In the case of these, I took them off already, but they were over-tightened, and... Uh, the heat sinks were pulled away from um, from this big aluminum extruded aluminum heat sink over here. I think they just overheated and fried. They looked perfectly fine on the outside, but inside they well, one of the four at least was shorted. So I'm gonna see if I can find another diode to put in there. If I can get this thing to stand up, hold on a second. And this here is the bad diode. Uh, it doesn't look terribly bad, but it's got thermal goop all over it, so let's clean that off and see if there's any visible damage to it. Well, I am not seeing any damage to it. It may not look good on camera, but there's pretty good lighting here. And it looks absolutely perfect, as far as I can tell. Not even any hairline cracks in the case. But it does test bad. So, I'm going to see if I can find another one of these. Put it in there, reassemble all of the input drive circuitry which I currently have disassembled, and uh, see if I can get this thing working again. Anyway, it is my lunch break. I'm going to quit here and uh, go back to work, but I'll continue this later, and through the magic of editing, it will probably be right after this. I'm back, and this is a top view of the board. This is a uh, bridge rectifier. There's two diodes over here, two over here. And these two are tested good, I just pried them away to inspect them. Over here, one was good and one was bad. 
My intention was just to replace the pair of diodes with new ones. However, I looked and looked and looked and looked and I could not find any diodes. So, yeah, I don't have diodes. Unbelievable. But I did find something that should work. So one of the two diodes over there is still good. I'll just reuse that. It happens to be a 30 amp 600 volt diode. It's actually a pretty nice one. Um, so they used quality parts in this one, not some no-name brand. And this is what I found to put in there. It is not at all the right size. This is a TO247, I believe, part, uh, rather than a TO220. And it is also a 3-lead device instead of a 2-lead. This one has two diodes in one package. It is 30 amps and 600 volts, just like the one I took out, and it'll work just fine. So I'm going to have to be a little bit creative in how to stick this massive thing onto the circuit board. I think I'll just end up using one of the two diodes inside the package. Uh, but uh, I'll look at the spec sheet a little closer, make sure that that works out, and see what I do to fit this thing in there. And there is my fix. The three original transistors and the big one over here. And if you can see that on the bottom, I actually took the lead on the left side and bent that all the way around to the right. This package does contain two diodes. I only need one, but I like free things, so this second diode is free. I decided to use it. Both diodes are now in parallel. Parallel diodes don't share current very well, but it still carries more current than just one, so I'll give it a go. So there it is. I'll have to add some heatsink compound, put all of the uh, heatsink braces back on this stuff. Over here I have a transistor I need to put back on. There should be two. Um, put that all back together and give it a test. And hopefully now I have found all the problems and hopefully now it will work. One note over here on this capacitor that was just missing. I don't know where it went. This one just connects up to ground so it isn't that important. It'll run fine without it. I'll get back to you and let you know if it works. Okay, I have the inverter together enough to test. I screwed the printed circuit board back down. This heatsink is not on on the input stage. I had to replace every one of these transistors. They were all bad. Over here on the drive circuitry, the two drive FETs were bad. So I replaced those with these TO220 or uh, TO92 tall packs. There was also a bad resistor that I found later. I had to replace that. The drive IC down here was bad. I had to replace that. These FETs were fine. Over here on the bridge rectifier, there was one bad uh, diode there, so I had to replace that diode. And all of this took me a very long time. I put a lot of effort into this, and I really hope that it works now. I'm crossing my fingers, and I may just give up if it doesn't. It's one of those things where I've put enough work into this that I'm sick of working on it, and after investing this much time into it, it really makes you not want to give up because you have so much invested into it. On the other hand, continuing to work on something that doesn't ever function just makes you look like a greater fool every time, so I just hope it works. I have my multimeter hooked up to the output over here. I have a load up onto it, uh, just these light bulbs. I'm not going to load it down too much because in my earlier video you saw these FET smoke, so I don't want that to happen again. On the input, I have a current meter. I'm running it through a 10 amp circuit breaker through these little alligator leads, uh, which aren't adequate, but I'm just going to run a 40 watt light bulb, so that's 5 amps or so. And my power supply is this over here, not a battery. That way it's current limited. This can only do 45 amps. So let's flip the switch on and see what happens. current going in looks okay. 117 volts looks good. It is a sine wave. And I'm just going to turn on this 40 watt light. And it's drawing 4 or 5 amps, just like it should. And the voltage is steady. 
The little chirp is because uh, my input cables aren't heavy enough. Okay, I'm going to shut it off. Discharge, discharge the caps. And now just uh, check and see if anything got warm during that time. Everything over there is nice and cool. With my infrared thermometer, I'll check this over here. I don't want to put my finger on it. This is in Fahrenheit at the moment. So that's fine. I was doing HVAC work with it before, and uh, I do all of that in Fahrenheit. Calculations are easier. And uh, checking all of these just with my finger. All of them feel very cold, so there is no heat there really whatsoever. So, very good news. I think I will set this project aside for the rest of the day and just pretend like everything works fine. <laughs> but uh, I do have to re reassemble it all. Uh, oh yeah, I also fixed some of these heat sinks which were bent up pretty badly during the install, which is likely why this one failed in the first place. Anyway, I have to add heat sink compound to all of these, put the heat sinks back on, bolt it all back up. These plus the auxiliary ones that they put over here hook up a real battery to it, and do some sort of stress test on it, and make sure that this thing actually works. I'm still kind of skeptical after all the problems. I wouldn't be surprised if I found some more, but for the moment I'm going to be optimistic, and uh, I'll let you know here pretty quickly whether this works or not. Here is the PowerBright 2200 watt pure sine inverter, mostly put back together. These heat sinks aren't really secured yet, and there's some other details. Uh, it's missing the auxiliary heat sinks here as well. But uh, little things like that. And I did test it out. I have it hooked up to these two batteries. It is a greater than 2,000 watt inverter, so I need at least a couple of batteries. I also have it hooked up to my charger. And for a load, I'm just using some light bulbs and electric heater again like before. But it does seem to function at least. I left these auxiliary heat sinks off here because I wanted to see if any of the components inside got uh, hotter than they should or hotter than others. Everything there seems normal, so I think I'm going to go ahead and put those heat sinks on and actually put this thing together before I do more testing. But these cables, I think they're 4 gauge or so, and they're proving to be inadequate, so haven't really been able to load this thing down fully. Uh, I've been able to put about 2,000 watts on it briefly, and that seems to work, but I am going to get this thing hooked up better, put it all together, and we'll do some stress testing. Hopefully it will be fully functional once again.